<laughs> Hello there, good morning. Uh, my name is Danny Henderson, and I'd like the lady in the other screen to introduce herself, please. What's your name, love? Where are you from? Oh, hello. My name's Nikki Allen, and I'm from Devon in the south of the UK, originally from Essex, which is the east of London. Oh, thank, thank you for you. explaining. Thank you for explaining, Nikki Allen. Now, ladies and jelly beans out there, Nikki Allen is one of the most famous and well-known British sites. Well, she didn't really choose to dress up very much. Danny looks like she's going to a catwalk evening on a red carpet. I look like I'm the cat in the binge around the back. You're so silly. You look beautiful. You're one of those women. <laughs> but you know, there's something else you do. And just to the audience too, we're calling this the Nikki and Danny Cheery Uppy Show. So we're just going to yeah. sit and gossip and gas bag and talk and, and share some stuff that hopefully cheers you up. Because I've been handling a lot of very, very, very heavy emotional subjects on my beautiful channel lately. Um, and so this is a beautiful burst of joy and, and happiness and hope and you know building people up but um <clears throat> you uh you deal with an illness which is why some days you can't get out of bed and again that's so inspiring you're so inspirational in that way um mm -hmm. would it be all right just to give a brief synopsis of what your illness is at this present moment and how you do deal with it it's if it, for anybody that remembers back in the 80s it used to be referred to as the yuppie flu um, and I remember someone coming to me and I did a reading for someone, right? I was in a in a theatre. I did a reading for someone. I said, oh, you've got ME. And the actual ego part of me said, oh, just deal with it. Get over it. You know, just push, push through it. And I, I myself was even ignorant to how horrific this condition is. Because what you can't see below here is I've got really high shoes on. Crutchless. I'm not joking I haven't opened but what you can't see is I'm fully propped by cushions and pillowcases and I've had so much so many um this is why I'm a bit brain foggy most probably because of the exhaustion I've had so many painkillers to actually get me sitting upright and the thing is it's, it's a condition that you never know how you're going to wake up you get permanent exhaustion all of the time it's just the levels of how much you get um permanent pain and again there's levels of how much but for some godforsaken reason the last month or so mine's been horrific like I couldn't hardly stand up for very long um and it's really annoying because in my mind I've got so many ideas and things I need to get done like a new course a new prison living course and things like that but you physically can't do it because your body's saying no and on top of that you have like brain fog you have digestive issues there's over 200 symptoms of this condition and so that's why I did me myself and I the book or ended up pushing it to get published to let people know they're not alone because the suicide rate has gone up so high I know it's supposed to be cheery up <laughs> but it has because especially men you know because men are supposed to be the breadwinners you know and they've got and they have to give their businesses up so like my partner Darren has got the same condition he's having to give his business up because he can't handle it anymore and it's about mentally getting over that grieving your old life and then thinking what can I do to adapt and make this as best as I can and so what I've done for the last 11 years is write um courses books do the guided meditations and social media because i can still talk for a limited amount of time it's no problem if it was just a wee tad worse i would have had to say no but i know i can handle this i know i can handle this because i'm propped up i've had loads and loads of tramadol <laughs> <laughs> oh my god Oh, no, I, and you know, people, and do you know, I have to say thank you because a lot of people that watched us, Danny, one said we were hilarious and it really cheered them up. So this is a great idea what we're doing. And yeah. the other thing is so many people said, in, have you tried this? Have you tried this healer? Have you done this? Have you done that? And I've even had supplements sent from South Africa from somebody. Oh. Right? How, how kind is that? So at the moment, and I have tried pretty much everything that anybody could possibly, you know, throw at me over the years. I've done and spent a fortune on all sorts of specialists and that to try and eradicate it. And at the moment, I'm trialling medical cannabis, um, which seems to help a lot with mind um, and upliftment. Not too great on the pain at the moment, so I'm just working through that. But this is what I try and educate people in. Don't give up and think your world's ended like I did. I thought that's it. I'm just, I might as well just take myself back home to the spirit world because I just thought there's nothing, I, there's nothing I can offer anybody anymore. And to be in the bright lights and traveling around and just about to tour America and Australia to then have a road accident that puts you in bed for five years, it was tough. 
but it's all about mindset and laughter is key. So one of the things I do when I know I've got a bad day like today, I thought, right, I'm going to talk to Danny later. I need to rest. But in the meantime, I played my favourite songs. I burned my favourite essential oils. I had my rose quartz with me. So it's like all positive energy and amethyst for healing. And then after I'd had enough of listening to music, you get ear sensitivity. My eyes, were, you get eye sensitivity as well. But I just put on one of my favourite films. Today it was Grease. Ah. Brilliant. Oh my God, do I love Grace. Grace is the word, baby. <laughs> and um, and so you've got all of my favourite songs in there. And it's one of my go time faves and Ghostbusters, of course. Totally. Of course. Of course. So I had that. And it's just, and you know, you just have to create different stimuli to make you think, yay. And do you know what else I do as well is, is I've got this favourite perfume that I always used to wear to the Caribbean. So that's my favourite part of the world, ever amen. And I sluiced that on. So I breathed it in and it automatically took me back to my Caribbean holidays. So, I, you know, I created because you can create your environment or you can sit in the dark, feel sorry for yourself. Look at old photos of when you had an old life and let your whole day be shit. Do you know what I mean? But I don't. I refuse to do that. And I tell you what else I do, which I absolutely adore. One, I've got the best partner I could possibly imagine because he totally accepts the condition. And then amazingly enough, got, you know, diagnosed a few months ago with it. But it's having an understanding partner, but also I can be real with him. So for instance, he'll come in and rather than go, what are you doing still in your nightshirt? I say, I'm having a nicky day because I feel rubbish. Do you know what I mean? With yeah. a smile. And so we can have a snug and let's watch something on Netflix rather than, oh, God, why can't we go out to the park? I can't walk the dog. You know, so it's about mindset, people. And so this is a perfect opportunity and it's a good kind of um, foundation to go from as to why we we thought of this cheery uppy session. Because one is, you know, I have so many followers that have got chronic um, conditions um, and it would be nice for them to just sit back, whether they're feeling rubbish or not, and just laugh with us. Do you yeah. know what I mean? No, I love myself. So, you know, I would absolutely, in my old life, I would be absolutely mortified if I had to come on here. I haven't really brushed my hair. I've literally just done that, got no makeup on. Luckily, I did naked, um, sitting out in the garden naked the other day. So I got a bit of a tan going on. <laughs> naked in the garden. And um, I'm in my night in my night shirt. And, you know, that's what I love about it. I love myself so much. And the inner child goes, oh, but, and I go, don't worry, we're good. We've got a good heart. We want to help the universe. We want to help humankind. And if they are worried about how good I look on the screen, then I don't want those people as part of my tribe. Do you know what I mean? Excellent. And so it's all about what you've got to give and what's in your heart and not how pretty you look. I'm saying that because you look amazing. Oh, my goodness. But you're so right, too, you know, and, um, um, you know, I, I love everything you said there. I do. I do. Right. So uh, thank you for explaining that people have more of an understanding and those at home with chronic illnesses will definitely get some insight into how they can support themselves. Um, now, as we're moving along, uh, you know, we're talking about we're being vulnerable. We're talking about everything that matters to us. And um, so I um, I uh, have started to having to wear glasses more and more and more. Um, and so I got a couple of pairs um, and I really, really would honestly, genuinely like your opinion on these glasses. Right. I'll show you the first pair. Right. Because why not? Right. I think these are a bit big. I right. think they're a bit big and they're a bit heavy on the old. I, I was expecting sexy secretary then. I'm not going to lie. Go yeah. on then. I think they're a bit heavy. Yeah, yeah. a bit heavy because you've got this beautiful angelic face with this lovely blonde hair. Uh -huh. I think they might be a bit too heavy in colour and shape. And All right. Now, you've got to be totally honest on these ones, right? Yeah. Don't hold back. You ready? Yeah. You know what there's an improvement on your eyebrows are they your normal glasses that you normally normally wear oh, oh my god my nose i oh. just i'm not gonna lie they are perfection i think so you should wear that through the whole conference honestly god okay i'll tell you what i do i've done it for years i know this wow. 
<laughs> something wrong with me and I don't care. I will go to Tesco, Sainsbury's, Vons, Whole Foods oh, on my yeah. own and put these on and walk around. Oh, just you are a legend. <laughs> You're a legend. All I'm saying is get some, do you know in there, I don't know if you have it in Hawaii, you need a bit of that for that lip. It's looking a bit heavy, love. But those glasses you've got on, are they your normal glasses? Because I just totally biffed them out. What happened with that? Are they your normal glasses? It's just do from the dollar store. They're a dollar. You get, I, I get all kinds, but these are quite, yeah, they're the worst ones. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because you need like, you need like gold frames or really fine ones for your yeah. face. But they're all right for a dollar from the dollar store. We get ours from, um, Oh, yeah, like the range. They're only about two pounds. So, yeah, I totally get that. Just get the cheapy ones. God, yeah. I would kill to go to a dollar store in Hawaii. I don't think there are any there. Um, I don't think there are. I've never seen one there. Uh, but oh, in Hawaii? Yeah, yeah, but in America, um, you know, I know they call it the mainland. Um, I can't wait mainland. for the Hawaiians to get their islands back for themselves but that's a whole other whole other story because you know it's called the 50th oh. state you can't drive there you have to take a five-hour plane flight uh minimum to get from america to <laughs> to the hawaiian no. island no. I, I so it's a, one of my ticket boxes darling i would just absolutely kill to be there but this is what i've always felt i remember doing a reading for someone in hawaii in fact she's been quite a regular bless her right and i always get a vibe of like UFO, alien kind of energy around Hawaii. I don't know why. And I don't even know if it's like known for a lot of sightings in that area. But I don't know, I always feel a bit UFO y around there. Yeah. So um ha ha on me, I got a bloody hair. Have you got a hair from those glasses? Grouch! <laughs> Do not wear these glasses. Oh. They can be danger. Danger, oh. danger. Are you serious about hair in it? Is it gone? I, I hope so. It'll wiggle itself out, I'm sure. Um, yeah, Kauai in particular. Um, I've been going there back and forth for the last 20 years, and there is absolutely a lot of um, um, UFO activity. Uh, there are so many beautiful portals here. I'm doing a show this week. Other friends, yeah, on the portals, uh, water portals, you know, rainbows are a portal. Water portals, that's what I'm talking about as well. Oh, my God, I've got to watch that. I can't, I absolutely swear down, I didn't know you were going to do that. And I've never, I've, I don't research anything. I just get a vibe there that I want to go there just to feel these, like, shifts of energy from under the sea, like the, the volcanic areas. I just get a real, every time I see it on telly, I think, oh, I want to be there. There's going to be something happening there. I've had so many different alien encounters, but that one I reckon will be massive over there. Yeah, yeah. So it's really, really special. Um, and, uh, you know, we have the time of Atlantis, but also I call Kauai Lemuria because it's the last place of Lemuria, which was the time before Atlantis, which I'm completely plugged into. My goodness, that might be because I'm Atlantis. Absolutely no doubt. If I could be a mermaid now or just live under the sea, I would. I'm obsessed with the sea. And um, I, that's what I've always thought, Atlantis. And I'm wondering if I had my existence there in that place of the world, there, over in Hawaii or whatever one of the islands, uh, because I just, just there's something about it something about it and my mum she always wanted to go there it was one of her dreams but she got she almost got agoraphobic towards the end of her life which was a shame and I always thought oh do you know what I want to go there just to honor my mum's memory to say yeah look come with me you're going to be going for free obviously and uh, come over there with me so it's one of my ticky boxes darling Love yes it. I'll be there next week have the back door key just under a brick okay <laughs> whether you're there or not <laughs> absolutely yeah, it's a great place, definitely. It's very exciting. Um, <clears throat> all right, so we're going to give the people that watch this that aren't British a little bit of an education on some of the phrases that we use in England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales. Um, and we are going to um, share words together and then you give your download of what you feel, feel this word actually means. The first word is gormless. <laughs> <laughs> Would they not know that in the US? What gorgeous is? No. The face would be. What? We've got to do the face expression, right? We've got to do, the... do yours. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I suppose, am I allowed to say redneck? Is there a bit. Um... 
Am I allowed to say red um, dragon or not? Let's call the people that would possess that word, if in its entirety, would be okay. the village idiots. Yeah, <laughs> homeless people haven't got a clue. They don't know what day of the week it is. They're in their own little world and don't get anything socially, humour-wise. They're just oh, flatline people in a meat suit walking around. Gormless. Right. Gormless. G-O-R-M-L-E-S-S. Gormless. -E -S -S. Gormless. gormless. It'd be gormless no, down here. They've got no That's gorm. Exactly. Right, they got no gorm. <laughs> they gorm exactly. But gormless. then you never hear someone say, oh, blimey. She's full of gorm, isn't she? <laughs> you, don't get, you don't get the opposite of it, do you? You just get gormless. Well, I've never heard gorm, so mm, tricky one, that one. I haven't worked that one quite out, have I? Okay, here's... <laughs> oh, God. I don't know the meaning of them. I was going to sound real gormless. Say, just used it. See what I did there. Use yeah, go on. Sense. Okay. Nincompoop. <laughs> Oh, you nincompoop. Nincompoop. This is brilliant. Nincompoop is like, oh, you fool. Or someone that's um, a bit cluttery or um, uh -huh. a bit like goofy. Oh, you nincompoop. Someone that's a bit of a fool or a bit scatty or doesn't think about things and just um, does things not thinking about them. Just a bit of a fool, really. Do you agree? What would you say? Yeah, nincompoop. It's a kind of way of calling somebody an idiot. Oh, you nincompoop. It's a good word that mothers and fathers might use around their children rather than saying, you you know, oh, you nincompoop. It's a good filler word, isn't it? And it, it, it lends itself to an air of poshness in some regard. Yeah. Oh, oh, Jasmine, you're such a nincompoop. Now, trot off with your nanny. Go to the West Wing and listen to some classical music for our ballet lesson tonight. That's where Nick and Poops shows. You're not going to get, oi, get down here, John, you Nick and Poop. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> dear, dear. Okay, although let's bring John into the fray here because our next word is oh. Wazak. <laughs> Where did you get these from? That's John. You wazak. It's it's almost going towards the wah naughty word, isn't it? Um, it's a it's an upgrade from Lincoln Poop to more working class. Um, but it's a bit posh because it's not actually saying the WA word, which means a man having a bit of a fiddle or a woman. Got to say man or woman. If you know the WA word I'm talking about, it's kind of just a bit lower than that. But it's a bit of a friendly, cheeky, chappy insult, isn't it? You wazak. <laughs> you cheeky, yeah. chappy. Step in time, Mira Poppins, you wazak. <laughs> That's what I think. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wazak. It's like plonker. Yes. But then they don't know what plonker is either. Which we're going to come to. We're going to come oh. Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah, streamlined. Double, double, double. Right, double, double, Nikki Allen. Plonka. Plonka. There's two, two uses of that. When I was a police officer on CID, when we were on the CID course, we we have to do sexual offences for a week. Well, we actually didn't have to do them because that would be wrong on every level. So wrong. But we had a week of sexual offences and I especially wanted to become a rape liaison victim officer. So they basically said, right, think of every single name because this is about how you communicate with someone because so many people use different names for genitalia. And obviously Plonka came up for the male phallus, darling. So it, it re kind of refers to that. But again, it's a friendly, rather than saying... Talking about love and light. I'm talking about Willie. Oh, Willie's another one. But Plonka is a bit like, again, a wazak or an nincompoop, but it's also referring to the fact that you might be a bit phallically orientated because you have done something really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you Plonka. And obviously, um, it must have gone over to the States. Um, oh, for goodness sake, Del Boy. Only fools and horses. Yeah. Thank you, Dan, darling. Only fools and horses. And he cut in. It's Rodney, you plonker. So it's a very endearing thing, but it's more going towards 
the phallic symbol, if you know what I mean. I'm trying to be posh here. It's not happening because I actually did start. Um, yeah, so that's my orientation on plonka. Excellent, excellent. And final potential word, Wally. <laughs> Wally, where's Wally? Well, obviously, if there's people from Australia, I know there are. I hate to everybody over in Oz. A Wally, isn't a Wally a baby kangaroo? Well, it, it is referred to as, yes, a Wally. I a think wally. it is, isn't it? So oh, that's obviously, that that's what they would use Wally for over there. But Wally, again, is another affectionate, if you if you like, uh, meaning for fool, idiot, oh, you did that wrong, you Wally. I do actually use Wally. Um, there's also, hang on a minute, isn't there a gherkin that's called a Wally? Yes. Yeah, yeah there is, isn't there? Yeah, a big, big one. Yes. And they yeah, call it's more up north, isn't it? In the UK, they call them Wallies up north. I'm sure they do. Maybe. I've only known about it in America, but yeah, Wally. Can I have your yeah. Wally? Yeah, so it's, it's amazing. Can I have your it? Wally? That's it. And that was the only thing I was worried about, you know, when I was, when they said, oh, you're going to tour Australia in America, I thought, oh my God, what if I say a word that to them, it's like fanny, like a fanny pack. Do you know what I mean? It's, that's not, no, we don't, a fanny pack here is, will be a bag between your legs of the lady garden area. I have died over the years hearing when, when people in America, because it obviously, so to people, in, um, and because I've lived in Canada and America, and they say it there as well. So, ladies and jelly beans, a fanny to British people is a vagina. Newsflash, it is. Is that it? The big G word. word. She did it. She did it. I did it. I did it. Because it needs to be explained. And we're not being foul or filthy or rude. We're just trying to share some, you know, colloquialisms and, and meanings in different countries. Yeah. And so, you guys, you guys in America and Canada, you have what you call a fanny pack. Okay. Do do That's you fine. not know how funny that is for us? A fanny, fanny. Or when, you know, you call a bottom, your bottom, uh, your fanny. Uh, oh, she fell on her fanny. Well, no, when I first said that, I'm like, rude. She might not be able to have babies after that. I'm not very impressed with the fact you're laughing about that, Mr. US citizen. It's not funny landing on your fanny until I realised <laughs> that it's but. But this is the thing, right? This is, you know, because my nieces and nephews, right, they watch all of these American kids on YouTube, so they're picking up on their slang. So, like, my little my little Esme, she goes, oh, I just hurt my butt. And I'm like, don't you need bum? No, butt. And they're like, candy. Mum, can I have some candy? I'm like, do you mean sweets? So, you know, very slowly, a lot of the colloquialisms from America are just drifting across these new generations that are watching all the American kids on YouTube and picking up on it. You know, and even the kids shows and stuff. So, that you know, a ladybug was another one. She goes, I've got a ladybug. I went, it's a ladybird. Uh, ladybug. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. So it's interesting. I, I, language is very interesting, but the funny one's brilliant. I love it. So that was another one that I was worried about mentioning. But I, oh, there's a story that um, Gordon Smith, really well-known medium. No, it wasn't Gordon Smith. It was John Edwards. Oh, yeah. He actually did a video about it, and I'm I'm trying to remember. It'll come to me. He said something that meant ejaculation. In Australia, it was a it was a slang word for ejaculating, and he kept mentioning it, and he wondered why everybody kept laughing, and he's like, "I'm not getting it." And in the end, one of the one of the runners had to run onto stage and whisper in his ear what it meant, and he went, "Oh, I won't be using that anymore." Then and it was hilarious, and I can't for the life of me think of the word now. But he was mortified because he kept saying it, and everybody kept going. <laughs> because he didn't realise it was like the slang word. And it's funny because I thought I'd kept my last book, a load of people from America said, I so enjoyed your um, English slang in there. And I'm like, I tried to keep it as generic as possible, but apparently there's slang in that, but I don't know what it'll be. Yeah, no, it, it just comes out in our everyday, um, you know, conversations. Like some lady in a comment uh, on my channel, I, I said bloody hell's bells about something. She's like, oh, oh yeah. And there are people that come back and say, I've said something that's just so normal to me in my normal gormless way. Um, and then they, they pick you up. What, they, yeah, you was it. <laughs> Lonka. All right, moving on to another <laughs> British phenomena. A phenomena yep. that we're going to share with the rest of the world that may not know it. 
we're going to share the known phenomena called white van man. <laughs> <laughs> they are all magics, gumless, plonkers, and anything else you want to call them. They are the most arrogant people ever, the white van man. They're funny and cheeky, but they don't care about anything. They think they're king of the road in their white vans, and they have got their own rules from everybody else. And that's their kingdom, their white van. It's like their white steed that they rush through the silken roads of the UK. Yes, I'm on my white steed, and you're not touching me, mate. They are, they are, and they tend to have every single item that they've ever used, like an empty chocolate bar, used parking tickets, crisps, old coffee cups, laden throughout the whole of the cab of the van. Have you noticed that? They have their entire hoarding thing going on inside the cab of their van. Yeah. White van. Mind you, Darren's got a white van. Oh, White van man. Well, <clears throat> white van man is definitely a, 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 a term and it belongs in a box on its own. Um, <clears throat> and to those that don't know, um, often uh, the man, generally a man in a white van, that's why it came about, is, um, uh, you know, he's got the right hump. He's got the yep, right he arm. owns the roads. He owns the roads. And again, words words when we're angry. I've got the right needle. I'm really niggled. I'm really miffed. The right hump. Got the right hump. And a uh, white man van will be there on the road driving a million miles an hour, making you get out of the flipping way, flipping all yep. kinds of signs at you. And by the way, everybody, this does not mean victory in Britain. This is the <laughs> F word. This is the actual <laughs> F word. Do you remember at school when we'd go, mm. yeah, I know. That was really rude. I thought it was just highlighting the fact that you're poking your tongue out at them. Yeah. That's a whole new thing going on there. That's a whole new insult that we didn't even know about. We didn't. We didn't, we didn't know how naughty it was when we were children. But yeah, I know, what... exactly. But they are here. Yeah, they do think they're on the road. They're very rude, or they can be lewd as well. I have to add that as well because sometimes they can eye girls up and bib them and give it the all right, darling. So yeah, they're just <laughs> they are breeding to themselves, aren't they? They're kind of born, and then their parents go, "Yes, he's going to be." A white fan man. We can see now. <laughs> it's going. <laughs> a moony or two in the window, if you're lucky. Yes, yeah. white van man is definitely his own breed of person, most definitely. Have you noticed? So I've noticed something. So me. So at school, you I had to talk like that because if I didn't talk like that, I'll get me a kicked in, right? Oh my god, I, I love could, when you talk I like me. Right, I couldn't be too posh. But at home, my mother made us speak properly, as she called it like this. So proper. proper over the years, it just works better for the muscles in my face. I have trust me done a lot of thinking research on this. Um, and uh, it, it's this is my natural normal, like it, there's no effort. However, when I get the amp, I can't believe how my mouth goes, right? It's like you lose your lips. <laughs> Have you noticed that? We're in Britain. It's so, and it, it connects to the white van man as well. I have noticed that. It's like, right, right, that's it, that's it, right? It's fucking Have you noticed? I'm going to have you. And it might go to the side a bit as well. Looks like it's having a stroke. Go, hang on, mate. You're having a stroke. Don't you? I'm having a stroke, mate. Don't you insult me. No, you look like you're having a stroke because your lips are gone and it's kind of gone to the side. Exactly. It's just distortion that happens. Right, right. Right. That's it. That's it. <laughs> road rage, boy. I know. They're so, they're so road rage. But my mum, like your mum, oh, my God, we didn't do posh. But if she picked the phone up, because in those days, you used to say the number. So, like, let's just make a number up. She'd go, 2390, hello. And then she'd go, right, hold on a minute. Nikki, it's the mate on the phone. Be like, Mum, you're blowing it, love. Oh, if you're just like, Nicola, Nicola, your friend is on the phone. Trot along, darling. Come from the West Wing. And no, no, no. She'd be on the phone. And then the other thing I remember she used to say, and we ended up laughing about it. Is that um, 
I said, oh, mum, what, what time are we going to the party? And there was, it was a party across the road. She went, party? Pa I'm going to swear, by the way, this is a bit of a warning. Warning. This is my mum trying to educate me in speaking proper. She went, party? Party? She went, fucking hell, Nick. Your language is fucking awful. <laughs> we allowed to say the F word, sorry. Fine. And I just looked at her and she looked at me and then we just burst into tears. And I used to bring that up year after year after year because she would make a sailor look like a bloody Snow White, drinking-wise and swear-wise. And all I said was party instead of party. And then all the Fs come out. And she did the same thing. Get out on it. Oh my goodness. Oh God, trust me to bring up the F word, but she was hilarious like that. She was hilarious. But isn't it funny how parents, I don't know, it's like Mrs. Bouquet. I wonder if they have had that over in the States. You know, if they've had, bless her, I think she's passed over now, isn't she? Um, what was it called? Hyacinth Bouquet, I, where she's pretending she's per posh. It, What's the name I, of the show? I can't remember. It's and so all her family were like, you know, lived in council houses, which, the, you know, state houses that the state provides for the US citizens. And uh, not for US citizens, but just for your benefit, if you not me. And um, so they're all slobby and like, is, you know, her brother's all big and overweight with a string vest on. And she's trying to pretend that she's really posh, isn't she? Do you know who I'm talking? Keeping up appearances. Yeah. Did you ever watch that? I watched it years ago when I was in England. Oh my God, that just used to make me laugh. But that is that is very much typical of some English families, isn't it? Especially like going up to middle class or they kind of, you know, don't want the riffraff to be acknowledged to the vicar. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, she'd be mortified if they turned up to like a jumble sale. That's another thing. Nobody know what a jumble sale was, would they? Which is like a flea, what do they call it over there? Oh, God, I've forgotten. Um, basically... It's I know the word. Second now, they do lots of garage sales because of this. Yeah, like it, yeah, it's a bit like a house sale, or garage sale. House. And then he turned up, the, but the brother turned up, and she did everything she could to keep him away from the vicar. Because as far as the vicar was concerned, she was on her own with her husband, very posh, very very posh, and very upmarket, and totally spoken would hide and get into sorts of all sorts of ridiculous circumstances. <laughs> oh my God, so <laughs> Voice. I'm rubbish at it. I remember one of my friends, Lindsay, I was in the police with, right? And oh my God, the stuff we used to get up to. We were, you know, we were young blonde girls and we just used to go out and have the best time ever. And obviously I got retired from the police and I hadn't seen her for a while. And then she goes, guess what? I'm coming to one of your shows. I went, oh my God, no, you're not. She goes, yeah, I am. I'm coming with um, my sister. I'm like, oh my God. And she goes, oh, and someone else is coming out. And so there's a group of my lot from the police who hadn't seen me since I got retired. I'm like, oh God. And then after I finished the show and met them, like, you know, back in my dressing room and they went, oh my God, we thought you were going to be posh. That's oh, really good bit. Oh, hello, darlings. Welcome to this evening of mediumship. Tonight I am going to bring you your loved ones from the spirit world. I went, don't be stupid. I'm not going to change myself. I'm not going to change myself. And they said, we really thought you'd be posh. And then I'm going, oh my God, was I too common then? Was I? Was I? Did I say party? <laughs> <laughs> and went, no, we just thought you'd be a bit, oh, hello, because you were working with Colin Fry, we thought you'd be a bit, yes, I'm now a wonderful medium that's acknowledged globally, yeah, yeah, and I don't be bleeding ridiculous. So no, I'll never change that, but it is funny. And it's funny how people judge you as well on how you talk. Oh, yes, yes. I'm guilty of that in the past, actually, myself, being a right, Are you? A right stuck up tart. I really was. I'd be like, don't say water. Don't say water, because no one will take you serious. <laughs> now I'm like, oh, Danny, shut up to myself in the past. Be quiet. You I know. I, uh, do you know what? If anybody ever pulled me up on that, and I obviously swear a lot. So I think I got that from the police, just working with men and just being a bit raw. And they do slip out now and then. And then if anybody ever says to me, oh, you just said that, then I'll be even worse. Yes. I'll be even more common and make even more swords. Don't even judge me on, you don't know my life. You don't know how I've had to express myself in the past. So do one, Wally. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, do you know, it's a learning curve though, because I remember we have to really watch prejudice. When I was in the police again, I was on night turn and there was a, um, a bloke laying in a shop front and I thought, oh Christ, he's a manky old tramp, right? And um, are you still there, Danny? Yes, yes. <clears throat> are you still there, darling? 
I just come back from the yeah, Ethan's yeah. Yeah. And I went, oh, Christ, there's a tramp. Now, where I used to work was Epping, right? And Epping borders on the metropolitan land leading into London. So we were right on the border of the metropolitan Essex place. So we used to have a game, right, which is uh, it's shameful now. But you know what? I don't care because it was like 20 odd years ago, 30 years ago. It, oh, my God, it was 30 years ago. I'm so old, Dan. Oh, my God. <laughs> and um, oh, my God, I should say. So... I thought, oh, let's get the stinky old tramp, put him in the car and dump him off at Loughton, which is metropolitan police area. So we ain't got to deal with him because no doubt it'll shoplift because they always do to obviously, you know, get their get their drink or their food or whatever. So anyway, um, he wasn't waking up. He was snoring his head off. Right. And he had this really weird box next to him. And I thought, I don't know what that is. I thought, I bet he's nicked it. He's had a burger. And I'm giving it all the, what he's done and what he hasn't done, the poor bugger. Anyway, in the end, I bent down. I went, oi, you, get yourself up now. Come on, we're taking you over to Loughton. I said, yeah, we're playing that game, mate. He goes, oh, I'm terribly sorry, officer. I seem to have just fallen asleep. I normally camp just in the uh, forest up the road um, so that I don't alarm anybody. And I thought, is he having a laugh? It was as posh as a posh thing from Planet Posh. And I'm like, and I, I ended up going, oh, oh, sorry, sir. And I started to posh myself. And I did the very like, hi, like, oh, oh, sorry, sir. Turns out, right, I ended up taking him for a coffee, right, and wow. gave him a coffee. And I gave him like a, he had like a breakfast bun and that. And um, it turns out he was a brain surgeon, Right. And this box, he held it just in case he ever needed it to show all his qualifications to prove who he used to be. Right. In case some of it was a nut job or something. All of his identity documents, everything in there. And it got so he was he was very prestigious. He was one of the most famous acknowledged, you know, brain surgeons in Europe, um, if not the world. And the pressure got to him. And they say there's like a fine line between genius and madness. And he got to a stage where he felt totally claustrophobic in his life and the, the pressure of doing more and more advanced surgery on people's brains and he had two lovely daughters and a wife and just one day he got the box packed up all his bits and said I'm going now don't bother looking for me and they tried to bring him back a number of times and he just wasn't interested he just needed to check out from the world and the rat race and so every time I swam from there, I said, I'm really, really sorry for how I addressed you. He goes, oh, I've had worse. Trust me. Trust me. And I said, please, just stay in the forest. Whenever you want a cup of coffee, just come out. I said, when I'm on night turn, you know, I'll pick you up and we can go for a coffee or a cup of tea, whatever you want. And he was the most delightful man. And it made me so upset because he'd gone from such greatness and there was nobody there to support him. And he, but he was very happy, a man of the land. And he said, you know, I don't want to steal. I normally find like a public water tap or sometimes I might be cheeky and go into like a swimming pool area and have a shower there. But he said he's got to know people at swimming baths that let him in through the back door. And some people give him free stuff from shops or he just gets it from the forest. He's just an incredible man. What yeah. a story. He used to be a brain surgeon. And I'm like, yeah, all right, mate, whatever. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> Side mouth. And he went... No, honestly, officer. And he goes, look, have a look at this. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, yes. OK, then, sir. Would you like to come for a coffee and cinnamon bun? <laughs> Bless. Yeah. You know, there are so many stories around the world like that, aren't there? Like, really, these beautiful people that we we walk past and we, we, discard, yes. we discard them in our minds and we assume that they must be this or they must be that. And we have no idea what got Absolutely. And do you know what a beautiful thing is? My niece, um, Faith, she basically, I've got loads of nieces, but she's the one that is vegan. She won't eat anything to do with animals. She doesn't, mind you, my other niece is a bit like that, but she's like, you can really see it in her. She just look at it. She's like an elemental and she loves crystals and she's very holistic. She's a real hippie. She's like totally on our wavelength and I love it. And um, she's just such a sensitive and an empath. Anyway, we were t we took them out for the night to um, Southend on Sea, which is like, you know, the kiss me quick coastal area of where they live. And we took them out, took them to the attractions and, you know, a little fairground. And we were walking along and then she just stopped. I was holding her hand. She stopped and she looked at this man that was laying there, a homeless man. And she goes, Auntie Nikki. So I said, she goes, we're gonna, we're gonna have to go into the shop. And I went, what's the matter? I said, don't worry, he's not gonna hurt you. She went, I know he's not. And so she was most probably about six then. And she goes, I'm so sorry, Auntie Nikki. I haven't got any of my money from my money box. Could you lend me it? 
I went, what do, you, what do you want, darling? She goes, I need to get a sandwich for that man. And so she then started panicking. She goes, what do you think he'll like? She goes, I don't know if he'll like tuna. And perhaps she goes, oh, I'll, I'll just get him a cheese salad one. I think he might like that. And she spent all this time deliberating what he possibly would want. And this man, she, she goes, excuse me, excuse me. She goes, I thought you might like this. And this man's face just lit up. And so did mine. So I thought, my God, six-year-old child has you know taken time to stop go back get a sandwich from a shop and come back and give it to this homeless man and that was just a moment as well what a moment and he said she's a good girl this one I said I know she's a very special girl and she is she's not she's not someone that really and this is you know people say about their children and worry but sensitives empaths and crystal children if you like the children that are more aware of the spirit world than you know um life if you like they live this lateral existence where um, they see the harm being done to animals, the planet. They just feel it and know it. They're still living that link to the universe, to the source. And you can see her contemplating things. And she asks really deep questions like, do you think the animals will still be here in 10 years' time? I'm really upset about how the humans deal with them. And she's so deep and so wonderful that I know she's going to be doing something exquisite for humankind, that girl when she gets older. But she's a loner. And she could be quite happily sitting in her room, playing with the crystals and craft work and things like that on her own all day long. She just doesn't mix with other people. And, you know, when I get people that email me saying, oh, my daughter, she won't mix with anybody. And she keeps wanting to get crystals and dig things out the ground. I went, bloody perfect. That's what sort of kid you want. You know, someone that's aware and still awakened, you know, she's still got a couple of cords there that are connected to the universe, keeping her consciously aware of what goes on. And I remember I had to um, put some rock salt up at the window and the door and sage the room and put amethyst crystal under a pillow. This is all stuff for kids that get visitation and a dream catcher. So that I say to it, if you feel anybody come in and you don't want them here, visualize them walking back through that door, which is dream catcher, worked an absolute treat. So there you go. There's a few tips if your kids are seeing people that um, have gone over the beyond. And she used to get visitation, all family members though, but they were just keeping her awake because they knew her light was bright, you know. Um, but yeah, it's lovely to see the younger generations following on our legacy. Because I'm thinking, and my, you know, Tyler, he's another one, my brother's son, because obviously my brother's full-time medium, but he's he's got it as well. And he and they just come out with this beautiful stuff. And then Jess, my other one, which is my brother's daughter, we were walking on the beach, went, oh my God. and it's like, oh my God, what's happened? What's happened? What's happened? And there was a dead cormorant. Cool She's like a seabird, right, on the beach. And she was beyond, beyond upset. So we had to do a prayer to Archangel Ariel, the Archangel of um, the Animal Kingdom. And then we had to place, we had to find some cloth to put around the cormorant and then build a pyre around it so, she, that, so that it was properly buried. And she goes, "Have you? are you definitely sure that Archangel Ariel heard the message? She goes, because we can't leave this all. And it was an absolute bloody drama. And in the end, right, Richard... <laughs> You know, my brother's this like me, goes, I forgot to take Jess. I think Archangel Ariel heard. And then you see all these people thinking that bags are going to Ariel. Um, and then she was happy then. She thought, right, the angels heard her. She'll come and bring this lovely soul back up. And she was, and it was just lovely to watch, to see the legacy being handed down to the next generation of children, you know, in our family, because we've got such a strong bloodline of it. Um, so it's nice to see it you know, go down to the younger generations and then just pop up with things and go, that's going to happen, Nikki. And then it does. And they go, oh, how did I know that? I say, because you're one of us, darling. Don't you worry about that. So it's lovely. It's lovely. How do we go from tramp to spirit children? Spirit, spiritual children? I don't know. I was say is you did that all by yourself, my love. <laughs> right. I know. With the little girl noticing the homeless person and then buying the sandwich. Yeah. Oh my God, well, yeah. this is so much fun. And we just wanted to, as you and I have both discussed, just like drop a bit of happy, a bit of joy, 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 a bit of education, educating the British ways of life, letting it be around. Yeah, like, darling. Oh, God, yeah, treat all. <laughs> Old face. Um, <laughs> next time we get together for the Danny and Nikki or the Nikki and Danny cheery up show. Danny and Nikki. It's Nikki and Danny. Uh, what we're doing is next time it'll be uh, fart stories, uh, dating stories, 
and <laughs> global accents. <laughs> It might be better on poo stories. Yes. Okay. I've got some classic ones that will make you wet your knickers. I'm telling you now. It could only happen to me. Oh my Lord. We're just warning the audience out there that you can choose to partake next time or not. <laughs> yeah, though, I'll try not to do any F words. Oh, yeah. No. I was quoting my mum, though. I was quoting my mum. So just saying. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> All right, Nikki, let me come to you for final words, my darling. My final words, I think, is completely reflective of what we've done here today. If you can't find laughter, you're going to struggle finding anything else in your life. Try and bring laughter and happiness into your world, because the more you absorb it, the more you give it out, and the more you will attract it and get it back. Ta-da! Short and sweet, darling, short and sweet. And sweet, girl, don't pad your part. <laughs> don't over pad your part missus <laughs> oh, it's been so funny my tummy hurts guys I oh, I, mind. Oh, I God. enjoyed our little play date today with Nikki and I exactly and you know it doesn't matter how much pain you're in or how exhausted you are right just have fun or find someone to batter off of and always mix with people that are positive and give you just as much back that's the most important thing as well don't let people drain you and I really sincerely hope we've given you a laugh today for all those people I'm thinking of you I am thinking of the missing millions as well as everybody else that's going to embrace this and just have a bit of fun because we do just very quickly I know you've got to go but very quickly one of the things that we do have to deal with is mental health. Most sensitives, empaths and people on this earth plane find it very difficult knowing that there's a home that they can go back to and it's perfect, but they know they're on a human experience, whether that's subliminal, subconscious or not. I'm totally aware of it. And one of the biggest things is depression, um, bipolar. So there's lots of um, spiritual people that suffer with the same things like this. So just to listen to us for half an hour, 40 minutes, it will totally change the way your day unfolds. I think so anyway. I think it's a brilliant idea that we're doing this. Love it. Me too. And to the audience out there, you know, just go back to the really funny bits. <laughs> yeah, keep replaying them. Or I know what's even better as well. When people watch this, put comments on what you want us to talk about. Definitely. 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 That's a good idea, isn't it? It's a good idea. And then we'll address them. Yes, we will. We will indeed. Oh, Nikki Allen, I love you. You're such a joy. And I'm so happy that you're part of the JISIC family, the Galactic and Spiritual Informers Connection. So, so look forward to you joining us at the conference in Orlando. Um, and Nikki, Nikki will be joining us on roundtables with other speakers, guys, just so you know, moving forward. Um, if you haven't got your ticket, why not? Yeah, why not, you Wazuk? Wazuk? It's Wazuk. That's Wazuk. That's from Australia. Why not, you Wazuk? Wazuk? Get your tickets, you Wazuk. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Do you know what's really funny? You're going to do it, darling, eh? I was like, do you know what's really funny to me? What, and this genuinely makes me laugh so so much inside. Imagine if we, you and me were the only ones that think we're funny. <laughs> I know. Can you imagine? And there's people with that, do you know, that smile, the emoji smile, which isn't a smile. But we're like, yeah, right. OK, love. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that. Don't give up your day job. This is our day job. Yeah. Ooh, OK, then. <laughs> but then they'll be like, I don't get it. It's not funny. What's wrong with them? We're in oh, my God. I hope we make them laugh. because That's going to be so <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> oh, I think that's funny, too. Do you know what we're going to be like, though, in Florida? People are just going to hear us cackling and laughing like witches throughout the whole conference area it'd be like what is that sound coming from is it something to do with like ethereal planes no it's nikki and danny just don't worry about them just have to part with it yeah you can't sit near me i know we're gonna get banned aren't we from sitting near each other that's gonna happen as well Oh, that's so funny. That's so funny. Nikki Allen, you are a joy. You really are. Thank we you. will see you next week, Nikki Allen, on our second Nikki and Danny Cheery Uppy Show. And to you guys out there, lots of love to you and see you soon. Big love.